In this video, we're going to look at an optimal controller called Linear Quadratic Regulator, or LQR. And we're going to talk about why the Riccati equation plays such an important role in solving it efficiently. Now, just to set your expectations, we're not going to go through some rigorous mathematical proof. And I know I've just thrown a lot of math symbols up on this page, and it might be a bit overwhelming, but I think this is all going to make sense by the end of this video, because we're going to walk through a simplified but useful explanation. I think it's pretty interesting, so I hope you stick around for it. I'm Brian, and welcome to a MATLAB Tech Talk. If you're not familiar with LQR, we have another MATLAB Tech Talk, which I've linked to below that explains what it is and why we may use it. But let me give you the briefest of overviews so that we're all on the same page. Let's set up a simple feedback control system. We have a plant that we're trying to control using full state feedback. And full state just means that every state X is observed and then fed back into the controller. And the controller in this case is just a gain matrix minus K, which is multiplied with X to create the input U, which goes back into the plant. And so the question is, what are the optimal values of K so that the system behaves the way we want? And one way to solve this is with a linear quadratic regulator. The linear in LQR means that the plant that we're trying to control is modeled as a set of linear equations. In state space, this is the x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx plus du. And we really only need to look at the a and b matrices since the output y is just the full state of the system, x. And so this means that c is an identity matrix and d is zero. So they're not really important for this controller. All right, so that's the first part. We need linear state space equations and specifically the A and B matrices. Now the quadratic term refers to the quadratic cost function that we're trying to minimize. In this case, we have a matrix Q that penalizes the square of any deviation in the state of the system and a matrix R that penalizes the square of any controller effort. And then we sum that across all time. So simplistically speaking, we're just trading how well a controller can drive the state of the system to zero versus how much effort it takes to do so. So now given the tuning parameters Q and R and the system dynamics A and B, what is the optimal gain matrix K? That is, what is the K that's going to produce the lowest overall cost? And we can figure that out pretty easily with a single command in MATLAB. Here, I'm just going to define our plant dynamics with the A and B matrices, and then define our cost function with the Q and R matrices, and then solve for the optimal gains using the LQR function. And for this particular system, the two gains are about 3.4 and 2.3. Plus, it also returns the solution to the algebraic Riccati equation, which is this matrix P. And don't worry about what this is right now, we're going to come back to it later. All right, so that's the answer to this LQR problem, but that's not terribly satisfying because we wanna know how to get that answer. And so what we're gonna do here is walk through three different ways that we can solve the LQR problem so that hopefully you have a better idea of what these numbers represent and why we solve LQR the way we do. We're gonna look at an inefficient brute force method then a more efficient learning algorithm method, and then the most efficient and the actual way that it's done, which is an analytic approach using the algebraic Riccati equation. All right, so let's start with brute force. Brute force basically means that we're gonna solve the problem with lots and lots of calculations. And to show you what I mean, I created this simple MATLAB app that calculates the cost for a given gain set. For example, here I have K1 and K2 both equal to one, and then the app simulates the closed loop system with these gains, which produces a plot of the system state over time and a plot of the controller effort that produced that state. And then it plugs this information into the cost function and then manually calculates what the cost is. And so with these gains, it produces a cost of about 252. Now I can just pick different sets of gains, which changes the behavior of the system, which then changes the cost. So with brute force, we just do this for every possible gain combination and then just find the lowest cost. And to visualize what this looks like, I'm gonna programmatically sweep K1 and K2 between zero and five, and then plot the resulting cost on the vertical axis. 
and this produces this convex surface. You know, it sort of looks like a blanket with the ends held up, creating a low point somewhere in the middle. And this low point is the lowest cost, which as expected is right around K1 equals 3.4 and K2 equals 2.3. So this brute force way is one way to solve the LQR problem. But as you can probably imagine, it's entirely too inefficient in most cases. I mean, who has the time to calculate every possible gain combination, especially for more complex systems? So with that in mind, let's just move on to a different method. Instead, let's try learning-based algorithms. In general, many learning algorithms use the concept of gradient descent. Gradient descent algorithms start at some point on this surface, that is, they start at some initial gain set, and then they calculate the cost, and then they follow the gradient, or the slope of the cost surface down until it reaches the lowest point. And this is kind of like dropping a ball onto our sheet and letting it roll all the way down to the bottom where it comes to rest at the optimal gains. In this way, we don't need to calculate the entire cost surface. We just need to calculate the cost that lies along the trajectory of the descending gradient. And if you're curious about what this looks like in practice, we have an example showing how to solve LQR with reinforcement learning in MATLAB. All right, so with all of that being said, learning algorithms are useful optimization techniques when there's a lot of flexibility in the system dynamics model or in the cost function. And this is because there often isn't an analytic way to solve the problem. And so we have to approach it iteratively with gradient descent or some other learning method. But that isn't the case for LQR. We set up the problem such that we need linear system dynamics and we need a quadratic cost function. And the reason for being this rigid is because with this formulation, we know how to solve the problem. We don't have to calculate any of the cost surface because there is a way to just find the lowest cost solution directly. And as I keep saying, the solution involves solving an algebraic Riccati equation. So let's walk through it. And just a quick warning, there's going to be a lot of math ahead, but most of it is just moving matrices around. So I'm hoping it's going to be easy to follow. But the bottom line is that we're just going to manipulate our cost function in a way that we can more easily find the controller U that minimizes J. And this is where our first clever manipulation comes in. We're going to introduce a matrix P, which is symmetric, so P equals P transpose. And we don't know what this matrix is, but we are going to find out later. For now, let's just add it into our cost function with X naught transpose times P times X naught, where X naught is the initial state of the system. All right. Now, we can't just add in extra cost. That changes the cost function. So we're going to subtract the same value to keep everything the same, which is perfectly harmless. Now, we can move this negative part into the integral where it transforms into the derivative of x transpose times p times x. We haven't changed the value of j because if we take the integral of the derivative, we're left with x transpose p x that is evaluated at time equal infinity minus the value at time equal zero. But the state goes to zero as time approaches infinity. At least it does for stable systems. And so what we're really left with is just the negative term, exactly like how we started. All right, now let's just look at this derivative we added and expand it to get x dot transpose px plus x transpose px dot. And you might be asking, well, how did this help? Well, we know what x dot is. It's from the state equation. It's our constraint. So we can plug in x dot, which then gives us this equation for the derivative term, which we can now plug back into our original cost function. And this gives us this super long equation. And just so that we are all on the same page here, this is the cost taking into account the constraint. But we can continue to simplify this by grouping the x transpose x terms together. So we get this a transpose p plus p a plus q group, all of that is inside the x transpose x. And then we get all of the rest of this other stuff. Now, as a reminder, we're still trying to find the control u that minimizes this whole cost function. But the part outside of the integral doesn't depend on u, so we don't have control over that. And neither does this first part inside of the integral. So really, 
we only need to look at what U minimizes this part over here. But unfortunately, it's not just U. It also depends on X and P, making it kind of gross and hard to solve. But here we can take advantage of our second cool technique called completing the square. Notice that these three terms have this form of u squared plus some terms with just u in it. And in general, we can turn this into a square. That is u plus some unknown value squared. And if we expand this, we get u squared plus some term with just u plus the unknown value squared. And since we just want to match those first two terms, we have to remove this unknown value squared at the end. And so we're looking really to just put this equation over here into this square form. And this is what it looks like. Notice that we have this u plus additional term scaled by r and squared, and then we subtract the square of that additional term, just like we expected. And you can expand all of this out and see that it is actually equal to what we started with. So now we can plug this thing back into our cost function and we get this result. Remember, again, we haven't changed the value of j. We've just reordered it in a fancy way. And I know that this looks a mess, but it's really super easy to minimize cost at this point. This first term doesn't depend on u, so that's cost we can't minimize. But this integral, we can minimize. And if we look at this second part, we can actually make this zero by simply choosing u to be negative r inverse b transpose p x, which is kind of a cool result if you think about it. This is saying that the optimal controller is really just full state feedback, where k is a constant gain equal to r inverse b transpose times this matrix called p. So what is this matrix p? Well, to figure that out, we can look at this first term. If the middle section here equals zero, then x transpose times it times x will also be zero. So to make that happen, we're left with this equation. And this is the famous algebraic Riccati equation. We have to find P such that this equation equals zero. And if we can solve this Riccati equation, then we have everything we need to find the optimal gains. So to summarize, if we find P that solves the algebraic Riccati equation, that'll set this part of the cost function to zero. And then we can use that matrix P to find the optimal gains for the controller U that sets this part of the cost to zero. And what's really great about this method is that solving the algebraic Riccati equation is much more efficient than any of the other methods we looked at. Now, to be fair, a closed form solution doesn't always exist for it, and so we do have to rely on numeric methods to find the matrix P, but that's relatively simple. And since this equation is quadratic with respect to P, there are up to two possible solutions for each dimension in the system. However, there's only one of those solutions that's going to produce a stable closed loop system. So we're really looking for the one stabilizing solution, if it exists. All right, so with all of that being said, if we now go back to the LQR command in MATLAB, we should know a little bit more about what it's doing. We have to give it the A, B, Q, and R matrices because those are needed to solve the Riccati equation. It then solves for P for the multiple solutions numerically, and then checks the closed loop system for each of the possible gain sets and just returns the gains that produce a stable system. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave this video. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of intuition behind LQR and why the algebraic Riccati equation is so important for solving it. Please check out the links below because I've left links to lots of good resources for more information on all of this. Also, you can find all of the Tech Talk videos across many different topics nicely organized at mathworks.com. And if you liked this video, then you might be interested to learn about LQR at a much higher level than what we covered here. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.